5.5 double angle identities. We have some double angle identities for cosine, sine, and tangent. And if you'll notice, um, they're all listed here. The cosine double angle identities, we have three different cosine double angle identities that we can use. There's only one for sine and one for tangent. So using these double angle identities, we're going to find the exact value of each expression. For A, it says 2 cosine squared 15 degrees minus 1. So if we look at the cosine double angle identities, if you'll notice, this middle cosine identity looks like this. 2 cosine squared 15 minus 1, that's the same as 2 cosine squared A minus 1. So our 15 is our A. So to find the value of the expression, all we have to do is translate it into this side. So this would equal the cosine of 2 times A, which in this case is 15. All right, so 2 times 15 is 30, so this would be the cosine of 30 degrees. And the exact value of the cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. For the next example, it's 2 sine of 22.5 degrees, cosine of 22.5 degrees. Well, if we look at our double angle identities, that matches the sine double angle identity. In the sine double angle identity, sine of 2a is equal to 2 sine of a cosine of a. So in this example, our a is 22.5. So if we just put what this is equal to, this would be equal to the sine of 2 times A, which is 22.5 degrees. Well, 2 times 22.5 degrees would be 45 degrees. So this would be the sine of 45 degrees. And we know the sine of 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2. All right, for C, 2 times the tangent of pi over 3 divided by 1 minus the tangent squared of pi over 3. So, of course, this is going to be the tangent double angle identity. And this would be equal to the tangent of 2A. And in this case, our A is pi over 3. So this is equal to the tangent of 2 times A which is pi over 3. And if I multiply that out, I get the tangent of 2 pi over 3. And the tangent of 2 pi over 3, that would be um, a negative square root of 3. All right, in this next example, it says, given that the cosine of theta is 3 fifths, find the sine of theta, uh, and the sine of theta is less than zero, which means that it's negative, find the sine of 2 theta for A. All right, so in order to find what sine is, when we have cosine, let's look um, back up at our double angle identities. So we're given cosine, and we're trying to find sine of 2a. So we're trying to find this, which means we need this part of the equation. All right, so we're given cosine of theta. All right, so we have cosine of theta, which means we need to find what sine of theta is. Okay, first, before we can find sine of 2a. Well, we can use the Pythagorean identity or we can make a triangle and um, say that, you know, this, this part right here is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse or x over r. Um, but remember in the last lesson, I said if you know your Pythagorean triples, then that can help you sometimes whenever, um, if, it's a, if it's a Pythagorean triple, um, then that will help you. That'll be a shortcut to finding the different sides of the triangle. Well. If you have a triangle with a hypotenuse of 5 and one of the sides is 3, the other side is going to have to be 4 because it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. 
So knowing that, we know that sine would be 4 over 5. Now, if you don't know that, then you can use the Pythagorean um, theorem or you can use the Pythagorean identity and you can find what the sine of theta is. But because we know that this is a Pythagorean triple, that tells us that sine would be 4 over 5. Now that we have two sides, uh, or now that we have cosine of theta and sine of theta, we can find the sine of 2 theta by using the, the identity. And that identity says that sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta. So now I just need to replace sine of theta and cosine of theta with what they are equal to. So this would be 2 times 4 fifths times 3 fifths. And then if I multiply that out, um, that 4 times 3 is 12 times 2. That would be 24 over 25. Now, um, this said that sine of theta is less than 0, so it's negative. So that should be a negative 4 fifths. So I'm going to make that negative, which makes our whole answer negative. All right, to find um, cosine of 2 theta, if we look back at our identities, so we have uh, three different identities to choose from, and it really doesn't matter which one we use. Um, it's always safer to use what you're given. So since what we were only given cosine of theta, this uh, is the only identity for cosine of 2 theta or 2a that has just cosine in it. So that would be the safest one to use, but really um, it doesn't matter which one we use. But let's just use that middle one, 2 uh, cosine squared theta minus 1. All right, so this is 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. So this would be 2 times, and then we, found, we know that cosine is 3 over 5. We're going to square that and subtract 1. So this is 2 times 9 over 25 minus 1, which would be 18 over 25 minus, I'm going to write it as 20, 1 is 25 over 25 because we need a common denominator. And that would be uh, negative 7 over 25. All right, and then for the tangent of 2 theta, if we go back and look at the tangent double angle identity, we need tangent um, for this identity. 2 tangent of theta minus uh, over 1 minus 2 squared theta. Okay, so let me put this beside um, what we're looking for so we can know um, what our goal is. So this is equal to 2 tangent of theta over 1 minus tangent squared theta. All right, so since we have sine and cosine, we can figure out what tangent is because we know that tangent is going to be sine over cosine. So that's a negative 4 fifths over 3 fifths and you know we multiply by the reciprocal which would cause those um, fives to cancel out okay so this is this but it's just the reciprocal and so this is going to equal a negative 4 over 3 so that's what tangent is So let me plug that into this equation. So this would be 2 times a negative 4 over 3 over 1 minus tangent of theta squared. All right. So that would be negative 8 over 3. 
over one minus, okay, so this negative four thirds, when I square it, that becomes positive inside the parentheses. Um, and four squared is 16, three squared is nine. All right, so I have a negative eight over three over, okay, so this one, let me change it to a nine over nine to get a common denominator and that would give me a negative seven over nine. And then I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal again. So I have a negative eight over three times a negative nine over seven. Okay, so three will go into nine three times a negative times a negative, that would be a positive 24 over seven for our answer. All right, now let's find the values of the six trig functions of theta given cosine of two theta is equal to four fifths and theta is between 90 and 180 degrees. So we're in the second quadrant. Um, so uh, we are looking for this is, this is what cosine of two theta is. So we need cosine of theta, sine of theta, tangent of theta, and their reciprocals. So if we um, look at our double angle identities, if we look at our different double angle identities and we're given cosine of two theta, we can use cosine of two theta here to find what sine of theta is. We could use this identity to find what cosine is. All right, and then once we find those, then we can find tangent. All right, so let's, let's um, it doesn't matter which one we do first, let's do cosine of two theta is equal to one minus two sine squared theta. All right, so cosine of two theta is equal to one minus two sine squared theta. Okay, so we're given that cosine of two theta is four fifths. So that means four fifths is equal to one minus two sine squared theta. So we just need to solve this for theta. All right, so first I'm gonna subtract one from both sides. All right, so this would be four fifths minus five fifths, that's the same as one, equals negative two sine squared theta. So that would be a negative one fifth is equal to negative two sine squared theta. If I divide by negative two, that's the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal, which would be a negative one half. All right, so that would become a positive one over 10 is equal to sine squared theta. And then we just take the square root. All right, so we're gonna take the square root of both sides now we know that this is in the second quadrant, all students. So that means that sine is positive in the second quadrant. So this is gonna be a positive, um, let me go down just a little bit. So this is a positive square root of one over square root of 10. All right, so the square root of one is one. We have to rationalize the denominator by multiplying both the top and the bottom by the square root of 10. So that would give me the square root of 10 over 10 is my uh, value for sine of theta. Now we're gonna use the double angle identity to find cosine of theta. So we have that double angle identity that says cosine squared theta is equal to two cosine squared theta minus one. So we already know that cosine squared theta is four fifths. 
So I'm gonna say 4 fifths is equal to 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. And we just need to solve that. So I'm gonna add 1 to both sides, add 1 to both sides. So that gives me 4 fifths plus 5 fifths equals 2 cosine squared theta. So that would be 9 over 5 is equal to 2 cosine squared theta. I'm going to divide by 2, which is the same as multiplying by 1 half on the other side. So that would give me 9 over 10 is equal to cosine squared theta. And then I take the square root of both sides. All right, and just like before, so first of all, the square root of 9 would be 3 over 10. That would be cosine of theta. And then I rationalize the denominator, and I get 3 square root 10 over 10 for the cosine of theta. Okay, now that we have sine and cosine, we can find tangent. So remember, tangent is just sine over cosine. All right, so um, it's probably easier if we back up a step. So we know that, uh, first of all, we know that we rationalize the denominator whenever we're given our answer. But if I'm going to do uh, sine over cosine to find tangent, it would be easier to use these values right here. Okay, so tangent is equal to sine over cosine. So that's 1 over the square root of 10 over 3 over the square root of 10. So now when I multiply by the reciprocal, that's the square root of 10 over 3, well, the square root of tens cancel, and I get one third. All right, so tangent is one third, and then we just need the other, um, the reciprocal functions. All right, so the reciprocal of sine is cosecant, cosecant of theta. If I take the reciprocal of one over the square root of ten, that would just be the square root of ten. The reciprocal of cosine is secant, so secant of theta would be, if I take the reciprocal of 3 over the square root of 10, that would be the square root of 10 over 3. And then the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent, so cotangent of theta is, um, if I take the reciprocal of 1 third, I just get 3. Now. Uh, we need to make sure we put the correct signs on everything. So since we're in quadrant two, sine is the only thing, sine and its reciprocal are the only ones that are positive. So everything else is negative. All right, and that's our values.